One of the classes I really enjoyed as a high schooler was geometry. I know that kind of makes me weird, uh, but I enjoyed working through the proofs and trying to understand the logic of uh, that course. It was one of the most challenging courses I took in high school, and uh, so I was very thankful to be able to have BJU Press uh, homeschool provide video lessons for me, uh, and that really helped me as I learned geometry. Well, in 2018, we have a new geometry course, and the teacher for this course is Ken Matasevic, and uh, he is going to be joining us uh, now on our Facebook Live event. And uh, if you had Ken for sixth grade uh, math, that is a course that he's taught, and I believe this is your second course. It is the second right? one. Second Very one. good. Fantastic. Well, uh, Creating a course for geometry, that must be very challenging. Uh, what, what, do you, what, what makes geometry so difficult in creating this course? Well, geometry is a little bit more of a challenge because, you know, I would love to be there and interact with you. I would love to be able to ask you questions and hear your answers, be in the same room with you, and make sure you understand it. And it's a little bit harder when I can't be in the room with you. <laughs> so... I, I do my very best to make, first of all, make the concept as easy as, as I can so that you're not looking at the camera like, what? Because that, oh, I rewind that and play that again. Now, we don't want you to do that. We try and make it as simple as we can. We try and make it as understandable as we can. Because really, one of the things that I, I focus on, you'll hear me say it a lot if you take the course, is I want you to understand geometry. I mean, a lot of people get through life and get through math uh, by just, well, I know if I do this, I get the right answer, and, pfft, you know, okay, fine, that's the end of it. Well, yes, you can get the right answer, but there's more to math than just getting the right answer. It's good to understand how it works, and I want you to understand how it works. Now, is that a challenge? Occasionally for me, yes, it is. I got to figure out, now, what's the best way to explain this? How can I make this understandable to a person that I don't get to talk to face-to-face? -face? You know, it'd be one thing if you were in the same room as me but we're not. But we're going to do that. The other thing, if, if it's being about things that are challenging, I know a lot of people when it comes to math, there's tests. Yes, there's still tests in geometry, and yes, I had to write tests in geometry, <laughs> and yes, somebody's probably going to make you students take them at, at an appropriate interval in the course. And it is a little more challenging because I realize, you know, grading a geometry test is not the same as grading, you know, just a multiple choice test or true false test. There's a little bit more involved than that. So I did my best to make the tests comprehensible, understandable, not too terribly difficult for the parents or whomever to grade. Um, now, it's still going to require some thinking. All right, we don't, we don't throw the thinking aside. We still believe in some academic rigor and the course is probably going to be perceived as a bit of a challenge, but it's a, it's a surmountable challenge. It is something that I think pretty much every student should be able to master as long as they've got the underlying classes, you know, the Algebra 1. By the way, you'd be surprised how often Algebra 1 shows up in geometry. So if you're taking right. Algebra 1 now, please don't forget that stuff because it's really important. And even, you know, 8th grade math, 7th grade math, 6th grade math, and, and yes, I did do the 6th grade math. Um, that's going to keep coming back, and you're going to start thinking, can I ever get away from this stuff? <laughs> no, you can't. But uh, yeah, so that's a little bit of a challenge. But you know, it is tenth grade, and you know there, you know there should be a little bit of a challenge in tenth grade. Absolutely, that's fantastic. And I know uh, there's several people who have. Uh, whose children have had the sixth grade course have said that their children love you. Becky earlier said that their daughters love your courses. So uh, one of the things you're, you're going to really uh, begin to see about uh, Ken is he just has a fantastic personality. So uh, we, we well, really you. appreciate <laughs> appreciate his sense of humor. It's really uh, it, math, it's math teachers do have a sense of humor. That's right, and it's, it's appropriate to, believe, to a math course. It's very fitting. <laughs> So we're very uh, appreciative of that. Do you, do you think um, that 10th graders have to be really advanced in math? You've talked about taking Algebra 1. You've talked about uh, remembering the, the things from 8th grade and 7th grade and even 6th mm -hmm. grade. Do, in order for a student to be successful, do they need to be a top-tier science, or not a science student, but math student in order to be successful? Or can an, an average math student be successful in this course? I think an average math student can be successful in this course. Now, there, there, there is work involved. I mean, there is effort involved. It's, it's not a, 
not a fluff class. You know, you, you do, you should do the assignments. And if you get a question wrong, you should go back and try to figure out well, what did I do wrong? What should I have done? What mistake did I make? And if you do that and you're diligent and you're striving and you're doing your best, you're probably going to do fine. I know uh, some students do struggle in math. Some students maybe didn't have the pleasure of having Mr. Harmon for Algebra 1 or or pre-algebra or anything beyond that. Maybe they're a little newer to our, our subjects. But I think, though, an average student who puts forth a good effort and you know perseveres and does their best should be fine. Very should good. Be fine. Absolutely. And we have a really good question here from Cheryl who's asking, does geometry come before Algebra 2? Would you recommend that uh, students take mm -hmm. geometry before Algebra 2 or afterwards? Well, that that is... That is a subject that has been debated for a very long time by an awful lot of people. I think it works either way. I realize we, uh, in our catalog, you'll see geometry comes before Algebra 2. It works. I, as, t as I teach the class, I do not assume that students have taken Algebra 2. Now, I do assume they've taken Algebra 1 and done reasonably well and remember some of it. But um, I, I think you can go either way. A lot of it may just depend on the individual student. Some students may benefit from doing one of them first or the other one of them first, but but it, it's not a, a black and white question. I mean, you, you can make it work either way. Very good. Fantastic. Uh, do you have any special features to liven up geometry? Yes. Can you tell us about Well, those? besides the fact that it's geometry and it's math and it's inherently awesome, awesome, which granted, you know, you already got that going, but we do have some additional things. Uh, one of the uh, things that you'll notice if you look in our new geometry book is in each chapter there's something called Technology Corner. And it features a software package called Geometer Sketchpad, which is very commonly used throughout the United States in schools of all sizes and kinds. And it's really neat and it's not even very expensive if you wanted to go out and get your own, you know, home copy. But uh, my assistant comes in and she shows the students how to work with it and just some of the basic things that, and she only has time really to go over the basic things. If you've got a student out there that really enjoys that kind of thing, they'll have all kinds of fun for a long time. And it's, it's a great software package. So that's one of the things. Another um, feature, in fact, we recorded it in this very studio where Ben and I are standing right now, is uh, we have something called the light board. And we prove some of the theorems using that. It's really kind of cool and clever and you'll see what I mean if you watch it down the road. Uh, I had a couple, a couple, no, three, not two, three. Some of you that took math too may remember we had a couple of guest appearances by my daughter Rebecca and uh, she was taking sixth grade math about the time I recorded that. Well, my next oldest child, I have four, Rebecca's number three, my number two child, Rachel, is going to be in the studio for a few lessons with geometry, sort of assisting me as I teach it. And that was fun to be able to work with her, and she did a great job. We also have some other segments, a little bit of humor and some other things. We got some. We put we put our production people to work. They did some little things with paper cutouts that are really neat, and uh, we try to try to make it as interesting as we can. And I I'm a firm believer that while math could potentially be boring if taught the wrong way, we're going to try to avoid that, and I'm trying to mix it up as much as I can. And I will even on occasion use my sense of humor to liven up the class. And yes, math teachers can have a sense of humor. That's fantastic. Well, that is, that is very good. We really uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, we've had just a number of people uh, mention that uh, you are their favorite teacher. In fact, Jennifer uh, has oh. mentioned that uh, she, she, she might be related to you, though. Oh, yeah, that Jennifer. Yes, that Jennifer. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. Very good. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Matasevic, for taking the time to uh, be with us and share about the geometry course. Oh, glad to do it. And uh, we, we hope that if you're looking at geometry for next year, that you'll consider this course. Thank you so yeah, much, thanks, Ben. Really appreciate it.